Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new here. Today we have another very exciting guinea pig adoption video. In this video, I am going to be adopting a new guinea pig. Her name is Sage and she is 10 months old and she is going to be the friend and buddy of one of my current guinea pigs. So if you guys have not been like keeping up with my channel or if you don't regularly watch my videos, I'm going to give sort of a like brief little description of the situation so you guys can know why I have decided to adopt a six sixth guinea pig um, and sort of why, why I picked her specifically. So basically I had a trio of three girl guinea pigs and I adopted a fourth guinea pig, Honey, who was five years old and was significantly older than them. If you wanna see her adoption video, I will link it up there. So I had the four of them and then I tried to bond all of them and that did not work, that failed. Again, video is up there. And then I said that I was just going to get a different guinea pig to be Honey's friend. Um, and so I went out and got what I thought was a girl guinea pig. The owner told me wrong. I ended up with my male, Waffles, who is here behind me again. His adoption video will be up there. And then, so now here we are. Um, I have my trio, my single female, and my single male. And now I am going to get a female for my single female honey. So that's basically what um, we're doing today. It's a bit of a chaotic like process. It's a lot of events that led me to this point. I did consider neutering my male and I eventually decided against that. Um, I wanted the most experienced vet if I was going to do it, but unfortunately the most experienced vet cost way more than I felt was justified. Um, it's going to cost me around $600 to neuter him and I would rather spend that money on taking care of more guinea pigs, which is why I've decided to pursue new guinea pigs as a friend for both my single female and my single male. So yeah, um, what we're doing today is getting a new friend for Honey. Um, I saw this little girl at the SPCA, my local SPCA, literally like two days ago. And then the next day I literally applied for her. And then when I went to pick her up, so I'm gonna take you guys through sort of the process going to get her and bring her home. They did let me do a little mini like bonding session with Honey at the rescue. So yeah, I'm just gonna get straight into all of that. All right, so I can't look at the camera because I'm driving, <laughs> which feels so weird. But we are on the way to the SPCA. Um, I saw a female piggy they had online. Um, she's 10 months old. And her name is Sage. She's absolutely adorable. So I went ahead and filled out an application and then I spoke to them on the phone and they said that I could bring Honey to the rescue and like try out the bonding there and like get a feel for the first impressions. So that's what we're doing. Um, I'm probably gonna give you guys more information later when I'm not driving. But for now, um, we are on the way to the rescue. So I just wanna give you guys a little update and I'll try and film when I'm there. I'm not sure if they will let me, um, but yeah, so we're on the way. And I know I had also mentioned at one point that I was reconsidering bonding Honey with the trio. And I ultimately decided against that because they've been living next to each other for almost a month now. I have been scent swapping all of their stuff for months and they still lunge at the bars when they see her. Um, so just based off that and just based off the demeanor of the original bonding, um, I didn't feel comfortable trying again. I felt like that would be possibly too stressful for Honey. She's an older guinea pig and bonding her with three guinea pigs, um, I think was just too much for her. And I just didn't really want to put her through that stress again, which is why I decided to get a new girl instead of trying to rebond. So I decided to go with this particular guinea pig because she was so young. So the website said that she was only 10 months old and Honey is five years. And I was thinking that that significant of an age gap would really be beneficial to the bonding process and would allow Honey to, I think, like assume that dominant position that she wants 
want since the other guinea pig is so much younger and more like likely to be submissive. And I'm really, really grateful the SPCA let me do a little mini bonding sort of at their rescue so I could get a feel for how they were going to interact initially. And just get a feel for the other guinea pig's demeanor when interacting with Honey. And so I'm really, really gr grateful for that. And it gave me an opportunity to sort of like speed date honey. I only did it with one guinea pig, like it worked out with Sage, but it did give me an opportunity to sort of speed date with her. So if it wouldn't have worked, I would have known and I wouldn't have been stuck with, you know, another lone guinea pig. I keep putting, getting my, keep getting stuck with lone guinea pigs. And I wanted to avoid getting stuck with another one. So that's why I did the speed dating and um, Sage, Sage is so sweet guys. Um, that was her name at the rescue. And I did keep it because it goes with my food names of all my other guinea pigs. So yeah, um, she's wonderful, she's great, and I can't wait to show you guys all of this adorable footage of her and Honey bonding. All right, so fortunately at the rescue, they did allow me to film. So I just filmed a little bit of sort of what happened there. We were only there for about 20 minutes. So I am inside the playpen. This was not what I, I didn't wanna be inside the playpen during the bonding, but you can see the walls are very, very tall for what they provided. And I didn't want there to be a fight and me not be able to lean over and break it up. So that's why I'm inside the playpen and the rescue had put these little huts in there and I just moved those out of the way because I didn't want to have any hides and then I give them some hay and then I just sort of sat in here and just observed. I didn't touch them at all. I just wanted to make sure that I was there in case a fight were to break out. So it took Honey a very long time to even figure out that Sage was there. So about half of the time that we were even at the rescue, Honey was not even interacting with Sage because she hadn't even like wandered over to her yet. So it was a lot of just this sort of stuff where they're just like standing two feet away from each other doing nothing. And so this stuff's pretty boring. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you what happened once they started interacting. So once Honey discovered that Sage was like actually there, they just did a lot of this sort of like circling and then honey was humping her getting on top of her a lot being very dominant but sage was just sort of letting it happen you can see here she just has her head ducked her legs are out she's practically laying down on the ground so to me this was all a very good sign that sage had a compatible personality with honey since she was just content to be humped and to just be the submissive one and she was actually following her around a lot, which I thought was really cute. It was obvious that Sage was actually really excited to be with another guinea pig. She's like following her around. She's sniffing her and all of this. So this is sort of the behavior that they had at the rescue. And I'll show you guys some more clips of sort of what they were doing. And here's a clip of them just sort of relaxing and eating next to each other. So this also made me feel good about bringing Sage home to do a more complete bonding since they obviously seemed content to eat next to one another. All right, so we just left the rescue. Um, I did decide to take her home with me. The first little bit they did sort of first interacting with each other seemed really good. Um, took Honey like 10 minutes to even notice her, but once she did, there was just a lot of circling and Honey did quite a bit of humping, but Sage was not upset about that. She didn't like, I don't know, try to hump Honey back or do anything aggressive. So it looks really, really good. So I'm gonna take them home and try and do a full bonding there and just see how it goes. All right, so I am now home and this is the playpen that I have set up for them. I'm going to add some water bottles. Gonna add two water bottles. I literally ran to the pet store as soon as I got home because I needed more hay for the bonding. So I ran out, got some hay, got Sage her own water bottle. I'm gonna put two water bottles in here and they've just been in their carriers this whole time. So I'm just gonna put them in the playpen and then just let them do their little bonding. It's not as large as I would like, but it is like 10 square feet, I believe approximately, and there is only two of them bonding. So I think the space won't be an issue. So I'm not gonna show you guys some bonding for very long because it was practically the same thing the entire time they were in the playpen. So it was just Honey walking up to Sage, humping her, Sage being okay with it, making a few noises before eventually running away. And that just process sort of repeated for quite a few hours while they were in here. I really wish I had some more interesting footage to show you guys, but as you can see, it's literally just Honey cir circling the playpen, hopping stage every time she walks by her, and then just continuing. So this, I mean, it looks good. This is what a regular like dominant submissive bonding would look like. 
So there's nothing to be concerned about. There's nothing to really point out here. So it was just this practically um, all night. It's a little not sped up version of what their typical interaction looked like. Um, this was basically what just happened over and over. Honey would mount her more sometimes and that was pretty much it. I'm not really sure what to say over top of these clips, but I did just want to share them so you guys can kind of get a feel for what their interactions looked like. So I just wanted to share a couple like real time clips of sort of what was happening in the playpen. So I couldn't get the water bottles to attach the way that I wanted to, to the size of the grids. So I had to make this little triangle out of grids right here. And it's just gonna be for the night. Um, I am gonna keep them in here overnight. Later in a bit, I'm going to add some like tunnels in here for them to sleep in at night. And then they have their water and I'll give them veggies later as well. But it seems to be going really, really well. Um, Sage is very, submissive she just lets honey hump her as much as she wants um she's been popcorning too which is really really cute and they seem to be getting along fairly well so i'm gonna be putting some pee pads some washable pee pads under this fleece blanket in here for the night and then tomorrow um evening i have class all day tomorrow so they will be staying in the playpen but tomorrow evening um, I'm gonna get home around 5 p.m. and I'm gonna build them their new cage. So hopefully they'll be all settled by then. Um, I am a little anxious to leave them tomorrow for class, but there's been no signs that anyone is going to be aggressive in any sort of way. Um, so I think it's gonna be completely fine. And yeah, I'll update you guys more in a little bit. They've been in here for about an hour and everything seems good. Alright, so after Honey and Sage sort of spent the entire night in the playpen, so they've been in there for pretty much like almost 24 hours at this point, or a couple hours shy of 24 hours that they've been in this playpen. And so now, currently, I am about to build them a brand new cage. Um, I wanted to avoid putting them back in the Honey's cage. One, because it was only eight square feet and I didn't want to put the two of them in that small of a cage. I'd like to go bigger than that. And two, because Honey can be a little bit territorial about her personal space. If I try to move her, or move her things or like mess with her while she's in her cage, she will nip me. So I didn't want her to get territorial and possessive over her stuff and her things in her cage. Even if I completely cleaned it out, I had a feeling she was still going to get possessive over it with Sage. So I just said, I'm not gonna put them in Honey's cage. Um, I'm going to just build them a brand new cage. So that's what we're doing tonight. Um, it is currently rainy and gross outside. So it's the perfect time to build them a new cage. Um, I'm going to be using CNC grids, core blast, my box cutter, my duct tape, and some zip ties. That's pretty much the supply rundown. I have another cage building video from when I built Honey's old cage, the eight square foot one. You can watch that up there if you want. This is sort of going to be a more quicker tutorial on cage building because it gets kind of repetitive after a while just building CNC cage after CNC cage. But I will show you guys how I am doing it. And there are tons more resources out there for like better instructions on how to build a cage, but I will show you guys how I am doing it. And it's gonna be a two by five CNC, which is gonna be around 13 and a half square feet. So I'm really excited about the amount of space and I think I'm just going to get started with building it. All right, so I am using a four foot by eight foot sheet of Coroplast and I'm going to be using Coroplast for the back side of the cage as well as one of the side walls in order to keep the hay in and to also use less CNC grids. So right now I am just attaching all the grids that I'm going to be using for the front and the one side and then I am just zip tying them all together. Next up I am using the CNC grids to measure how tall I want the back of the cage to be so that the height is the same all the way around. Then I'm just using my box cutter to cut halfway through the core blast so that it will fold up to form the back of the cage. Then I'm doing the same to the other side of the core blast so that the right side of the cage can also be solid. And then I'm just scoring halfway through the core blast. And then I'm gonna flip it over here and then just fold it up and cut it so that it will fold over to make the side and back of the cage. And then I flip the Coroplast back over and fold my grids to only be two grids wide so I can figure out where the front of the cage would need to be. So when you're using Coroplast, you have to remember that your cage is going to be built flipped over like this. So you can see here, I made the front side of the cage and now I'm just sort of measuring to make sure that it's going to be the right size that I want. 
and I'm just using a little bit of duct tape to temporarily tape it into place so to make sure that I have properly measured and that it's going to fit the grids correctly. And then the front side that I had cut was actually about six inches tall and I only wanted it to be about four inches tall. So I just went ahead and cut two inches off of that piece of chloroplast. And then next up, I again used some duct tape to sort of makeshift how wide the cage was going to be. And then I just used my measuring tape to figure out where I needed to cut for the final side of the cage. And then I just measured how far I needed to cut and then used my piece of chloroplast to draw a straight line to score across. And then once I'd cut the final side, I just went ahead and flipped it back over and folded up all of my sides. And you can see the side on the far right is almost the entire height of the cage. Age, but I only wanted it to be four inches tall, so I just went ahead and cut that side down as well. And now it's time to attach the grids and secure the cage. So basically I just used a ton of duct tape here to secure where all of the chloroplast overlapped on the back and sides. All right, so now I am just attaching my CNC grids and I have it so that one grid goes around to the back and one grid goes around to the other side. And I'm just stabbing holes through the chloroplast and then using zip ties to attach the grids straight to the chloroplast so that it's not going to come forward or move around at all. And they're just going to be very secure to the chloroplast. So I'm gonna give you guys a little tour of the cage now. Currently, um, it's right here and I can't close the door, but it, I'm gonna rearrange this whole room. It's a mess, it's gonna get rearranged. Honey's old cage is just up there. I didn't know where to put it, so there's gonna be rearranging, but for now, it fits okay. And so I've included two tunnels for now. I have one more that's in the wash, and then this little house which has two entrances and then this little fleece forest so they can't like trap each other in anything. And then I put the main litter box and also a little second one for sage, but there hasn't been any issues. They've been both eating out of this one. And then I have two water bottles. They are currently at two different heights because I don't normally put my water bottles on the 14 inch grid, so I didn't know which height is better. Um, and Honey's been doing a lot of pumping, like a lot of pumping but I'm thinking she feels the need to reestablish her dominance like in a new cage, like in a new space, but nothing overly aggressive. Same as everything that's been happening, I'm sure eventually it'll just calm down with time, 
Um, so I'm not too worried. Everything seems pretty calm. And yeah, I think it looks really good. I really love it. I'm gonna add some more toys so they have some more things to do. But yeah, that's basically what the cage looks like and I'm probably gonna be back with an update just about how uh, things are going with the two of them. Hey everyone, it is now Saturday and I am back with a couple of updates on how Honey and Sage are doing as well as a few updates about my guinea pig room in general. So I took Sage home on Tuesday and now it is currently Saturday and I would say they have been getting getting along fa fairly well. Um, Honey has continued to hump and rumble and mount Sage even a couple days later. She's still doing it today. And I'm going to give them around a week, two weeks for that to settle down. It may just be that Honey is not sure how to interact with other guinea pigs since she's lived alone for five years, her entire life. So I'm gonna give them some time to work it out. Basically the same behavior in the bonding pen, the humping and the mounting and Sage just completely allowing it has just continued in their cage for like three days, but it's been going all right. Sage was hiding in her tunnel for a while and I was a little concerned that she wasn't coming out enough to eat and drink because every time she would leave, Honey would just hump her. So I took her out and I did some hand feeding, fed her a little bit of critical care. She was eating on her own, but I just wanted to make sure that she was getting enough nutrients. That she wasn't, you know, like, not eating because she was afraid of being humped by honey. But I came home from work today and there seems to be a little bit less humping. Um, Sage was out and walking around when I came home. So it's looking very good. And as you guys can see, their cage is now on a table, which I am super, super excited about. I made a, quite a few changes to my guinea pig room. And if you guys keep up with my channel, you will know that about two weeks ago, I posted a reorganizing my guinea pig room video where I made changes then. Um, if you guys wanna watch that video, I will link it up here, but I have made even more changes now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give you guys a quick little tour of what the room looks like. <music> So this is sort of what the room looks like as you first walk in. Over here on this table by the door is where I have Honey and Sage's cage. So Sage is hiding in this little tunnel at the moment. But this is just what their cage looks like. I sort of already showed it to you guys earlier. It's just up on this table now. Nothing too different about it. And then underneath the table, I have what used to be Honey's old cage. So this eight square foot cage and I have connected it to my girls Midwest with this ramp right here. So here is their double Midwest cage. So that my three girls now have a total of 20 square feet, which is a huge amount of space. And I am so glad to give it to them. And I think this L shape works fairly well. Um, it gives them a lot of space and I got to use Honey's cage, which is good because I didn't just want to put her cage to waste. I wanted to incorporate it somehow. So I feel like this works super great. And they have their little litter area over here. And I got them a gray litter box to match everyone else. So now they all have the same litter box and I think it looks really good. And then up on this table, above the very edge of the girl's cage, we have Mr. Waffles right here. Yeah, his cage hasn't changed from the last time. It is still just a three by three grid, um, but he's liking it. It gives him plenty of space. The square is really nice for him because he has space and she's such a large pig. Uh, he's almost, he's three pounds. So he's got a pretty large cage, which makes sense because he's a pretty large pig. Um, hi. Hi, Waffles. He's so sweet. 
And then underneath his cage, I just have some miscellaneous stuff and then my fleeces and pads and those drawers back there and then my 10 pound box of hay. And then over here was my hay trash can. But yeah, that's pretty much what the room looks like. I'm super, super proud of it and I hope you guys enjoy it too. All right, so now that you guys have seen the room, which I am so, so proud of and so, so happy with, it's definitely not the permanent setup that I want because eventually my goal, I want waffles to be on the floor and then to have all my girls on tables so that there's no risk of pregnancy at all. Um, so that's what I'm hoping to get to, but I have to find tables that are large enough because I want to give my three girls a ton of space. Um, now I have upgraded them to 20 square feet of space and I don't have to stay at 20, but I really don't want to drop below 18. So it just sort of depends on what size table I can find, the kind of space I have in the room and just sort of what I figure out. But for now, the setup definitely works. It's only a little bit hard to clean the three girls cage. I bumped my head on the table a few times, but it's something that's unmanageable and it's been going fine so far. And I like that they're all like lined on the walls and I still have a decent amount of like floor space in here. So I'm definitely pleased with the room and things seem to be going well with Sage. She's still a little shy. And I'm trying not to like handle her too much except for the critical care feeding that I did yesterday just to let her settle in, let her and Honey's bond settle. So I'm gonna continue to monitor them, make sure she's continuing to eat, make sure Honey doesn't get any more aggressive, which I don't think she's going to at this point. It's been multiple days. If all she's doing is humping and rumbling, all she's going to continue to do the most is likely to hump and rumble. So I'm not very worried. Things seem to be going well. And I am now the proud owner of six guinea pigs, which is a huge amount. I never thought that I would make it to six. I adopted Sage almost exactly one year after I adopted my first two guinea pigs, peanut and marshmallow. So within a year, I went from two guinea pigs to six guinea pigs, which is crazy. Um, but I'm very happy with it. And I'm very happy with my guinea pigs and with this channel and I wanted to say a huge thank you to you guys for 4k subscribers um, I really appreciate each and every single one of you thank you guys so much for supporting me for supporting my channel for supporting my pigs uh, we all appreciate appreciate it very very much and I am super grateful and thank you guys so much for watching this video uh, please leave a like if you enjoy subscribe to see more content about sage about honey and hopefully about finding Mr. Waffles a little friend in the future. Um, I'm working to find him the perfect partner. We're gonna hopefully I can find someone that he will bond with. Um, it's a little difficult because I have no idea is how dominant or how submissive he is since he's only, I've only ever seen him by himself. But hopefully I can find him the right partner. And yeah, so just subscribe to stick around for all of that fun stuff. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye.